And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hi folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today I am talking about Century Eastern Wonders. Century Spice Road was one of the best gateway games I've ever played. Love this game the minute I, I played it. I played it many, 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 many times. I've taught it to many people. And so I was pretty interested in the fact that this was supposed to be the first game in a trilogy. So we have Spice Road and Eastern Wonders, and I think, yeah, the boxes, they fit together. Ooh. Um, so this is the second one, and I heard that they were even going to be compatible with each other. How's that going to work? Well, it uses, this game is its own game. Century, oh, I'm the wrong one up here now. Century Eastern Wonders is its own game, but you can use elements from Century Spice Road for a second game. So this is, you actually get a full game in here, and then if you have the first one, you can make a second game out of it, and I'll go over both of these. I've already done a first impressions of this and the other games. You can see those, but these are my final thoughts here after having played it several more times. Let's take a look at how the game plays. So here's the setup for the game now. I want you to realize that this board here, uh, this mat, is not necessary and is a separately sold item. But I mean, it looks beautiful. But I do, all you really need is to place these out randomly. You're going to take out, there's four different types, one to match each type of good. You're going to take one out randomly and then build the, the board with these ports in the corner. Each player is going to get a color. They're going to place a bunch of their houses on each of these. So you're going to have these different trading posts essentially down here and you're going to be placing these on the board. You're also going to start with some goods. There's four sets of goods that the game will basically let you draft in turn order to see what you're going to start with or reverse turn order anyway. And so for example here I have the two yellows and the red. Now on your turn the first thing you're going to do is you're going to move your boat. Now the boats will be picked also in turn order. And you can move your boat one space in the board. Now if I want to move my boat more than one space, I can. But each extra space I have to leave a cube in. So you can move pretty quickly, but you have to drop cubes. And if someone else ends their space in those spots, then they are going to get those cubes. Now I'm trying to think, okay, what am I going to do? So let's say I would probably start the game here. And on my first turn, I would go here. Why am I going here? Because this tile allows me to trade one red in for three yellows. Well, that's a pretty cool thing, considering I have a red that I start with. So I move there. That's my first action. Is The first thing I do on my turn is moving. After moving, I then can take one of three different actions. I can harvest. Harvest is something anybody can do, and you're just going to take two yellow cubes and add them. So if you can't do anything else, you can just add two yellow cubes to your board. Another thing you can do is you can claim a victory point tile if you land on these. If you have the right number of cubes, you can get these. So that's my whole goal in this game. Or the other is you can do a market. So if you're on a, one of these market spots, I can drop one of mine there. This is a yellow, so I would drop the first house in my yellow row down here on this spot. And then I can perform that action. If I already have the trading post there, I can perform the action. So this one again lets me trade in one red for three yellows. Now I only have so much spots to keep stuff. I only have ten spots here on my ships where I can hold things. But now maybe at my next turn, I would go here, build a trading post here and then trade in three of those yellows for a brown. Or I might instead take two yellows first, where I just harvest, like this. Then I can go to this brown spot, drop the trading post, and I can turn in three yellows for a brown, but I'll do it twice. So now I have two browns. Is two browns good? Sure, because this one over here needs two browns and four reds. Maybe that's the one I'm going for. So that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be building trading posts. Now if there's a trading post already there, then you have to pay a cube to put a trading post on top of that. So if there's two posts, outposts there, you'll have to put two cubes, etc. So you have to be careful not to wait too long to claim these spots because as other people have their trading posts on the board, you know, if there's a black and a white trading post here, to go there is going to be more expensive. Now, there are some benefits to these trading posts. Once I complete an entire column of a trading post, I'm going to get a benefit. 
So going to four different colors can be very useful. What are these benefits? I can take one of these tiles up here. So I can take these tiles, which give more room to my boat. I can now store three additional goods. I can take this one here, and when I harvest, instead of getting two yellows, I'll get two yellows and a red. Also, that's worth a victory point at the end of the game. Here, uh, I can get two victory points whenever I harvest where I have a uh, post. Here, my boat can move an extra spot for free, and it's just victory points, although this one does go down as time goes by. Also, as I'm removing these cubes from my spots here on my board, once I get past the first uh, column, any uncovered spot's going to be worth extra points at the end of the game. Now, the whole game itself is about going and dropping off. So if I have three browns and a red, I go here, turn those in. And then we draw a new tile to take that's place. In the top stack of tiles, there is this red X. When that's drawn, let's say someone does this, we put the red X there. And from now on, anytime someone finishes one, we move the red X to that spot and put it, the good in the spot where the red X was. That means there's only three ports and you can't quickly just do a whole bunch in a row that are next to you. You'll have to go and drive your ship across the board to get somewhere else. That's pretty much it. There's a few other things, like if you land in a spot where someone else's ship is, you gotta pay him a cube. And you can also create your own map here where you can do whatever, you, you know, all kinds of weird maps if you want to. But that's the basic rules of this game. You can also combine the game with Century Spice Road. This was the original game, and on this board here, they show you where there's some cards, and you're gonna be combining the two. It looks a little different. Here you'll see some of the tiles have been replaced by C, so there's fewer places to put trading posts, and there's also the cards here. These cards are the ones that come from Century Spice Road. Each player will start with the starting two cards from Century Spice Road in their hands. On your turn now, things are going to be slightly different. You can still move your ship around and use a trading post, but you can't use the harvest action anymore. So not only is the harvest action out of the game, but the two tiles that refer to it will be gone. Uh, you can also, instead of harvesting or going to a port and getting rid of those, you can play a card from your hand and do whatever it says. Take two yellow cubes, upgrade two cubes. Or you can take one of these cards here, again dropping a cube on each one that you skip and those cards will then be allowed to be played. And then you have the action from the original game where you can rest and these cards come back in your hand. Either way, I should point out that both games end the same way. When one player has four port tiles, then the game finishes the round where one gets an equal number of turns and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. Also, each non-yellow cube is worth a point at the end of the game. So you'll be taking points from here, points from the tiles that you've gotten, and maybe from the upgrade tiles. That's how you play both games. So obviously this mat is kind of like, oh, I played this without the mat and I was like, where's the mat? Because the mat just makes things nice. But if you play without the mat, you can still do it. And these tiles are nice. It's, they do this interesting thing with these tiles where they're, they're curved in the sides and you're like, ooh, that's really neat. Um, but it's not as, as cool as it is when placing the tiles because you're like, wait, how do these fit together again? I, I, maybe that's just me. The artwork on the tiles is really nice. I can see the different things on each of the tiles. It, but I mean, you, you'll kind of forget about that. You're too worried about what changes into what. These are the goods are just cubes with the bowls that they come in are really nice. Oddly enough, everything fits into this insert, but for some reason, we found that putting stuff back in this insert is a real pain. Trying to figure out where do the tiles go in here? Do the cups go in there? Do the tiles go in first, then the cups? It's not that big of a deal, but I'm probably not going to keep the insert. In fact, I'm going to try to keep everything from both Century Eastern Wonders and Century Spice Road in the same, uh, same box. So it is nice. One page of rules. There's actually you know, two sets of rules included, one for the regular game and one for the using them both combo together. Easy to set up and teach. Let's talk about my final thoughts. I would be remiss if I didn't say that the theme itself is kind of like, ah, eh, you know, the, the, the different cubes mean different things. I forget what they mean. I keep meaning the, what are the cubes? Cloves, tea, chili, and ginger. No, no, in this one, there's cinnamon, cardamom, saffron, and turmeric. They look the same to me. They're yellow, green, brown, and red cubes, whatever. But, you know, the theme is what the theme is. You're going around and you're changing cubes for other cubes. Now, this was great in Century Spice Road. Very fast, simple game. This game is more complex. It's not that it's much more complex in what you're doing. You're literally doing almost the same thing. The difference is instead of playing cards, you are now focusing on the board. 
So when you focus on the board, there's four tiles that are gone, but other than that, it's the board is just a big puzzle. You're saying if I go here, I can change that, go over here and do that, and you can make yourself a nice little engine. So that's one way to do. I play games where I made this really engine, I'm like changing cubes, changing cubes. But if you only make this little engine that changes cubes, you're missing out at putting cubes out all over the board, or I'm sorry, trading posts all over the board, which can get you a lot of extra points at the end of the game, and gives you those bonus tiles. Sidebar, bonus tiles. That's a great idea, I love them. But I'm gonna need someone to explain to me why taking the plus one movement isn't always your first choice. Being able to move two and shoot all over the board is a huge thing and without having to pay cubes for it. And if you manage to get two of those move tiles, oh my, that's really good. So I, you can argue over, you know, maybe you want more space, maybe you want your harvest actually better, maybe you want the extra points or whatever, but it seems like moving the boat, at least in the beginning of the game, should always be your first option. I might be wrong there. But it is more cerebral the whole game because you're gonna sit there and you can see everything. With Century Spice Roads, you have the cards, they're gonna change, the cards might change how the game plays. And so this more cerebral experience is going to appeal to gamers for sure because they're going to be able to see everything. The luck is not going to be that great in this game. There's almost no luck at all other than the tiles that come out for the orders and you're sitting there and figuring out your path and pattern. And it feels like the interaction is definitely stronger because other people are going to a spot first with a trading post and their ship is also there. And I want to pay them a cube and I don't want to do that. So there's a little bit more interaction for me in this game but I don't think it's as easy to play for new players. Now the combo game, now that I've played these all several times, I would rank them like this. Century Spice Roads is my favorite of the bunch. It still is, it's easy, it's fast. I just like it the best. But I like the combination of them, which is called, what is the combination called? From Sand to Sea. I think I like that combo the best because I like using the cards and the, the stuff on the board. So you have this puzzle on the board and where everything is supposed to go, but there's also cards that can shake things up and I might have a card no one else has. So I think it's a little bit of the best of both worlds. Although I still like the simplicity of the first one best. If you like the first one, I think you'll like the second one because it has a lot of the same ideas in it, except that instead of playing cards, everything's out there on the board. If you liked the first one and thought that you wanted something a little bit deeper, then this is definitely your jam, because this is going to add that in there. I like this one a lot. I think it's good. I don't think it's nearly the groundbreaking, amazing game that the first one was, but I like the fact that they combine together, and if I manage to squish them all into one box, which I think I can do, uh, I, it, it's just a lot of fun to maybe switch back and forth. And there's a third one coming out. How's that one going to mix with these two? Well, that's a topic for another year. But either way, I still think Emerson, fantastic designer. I'm looking forward to see what he does next. And this is a cool, different, and yet samey sequel to this series.